Today, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step how to draw and paint your own little sacred heart. You need a piece of watercolor paper taped down with masking tape. I taped it onto a piece of cardboard. You need a water cup. You need some different sized paint brushes. You need some watercolor paints. You need a paper towel, a pencil, and if you want to, you can have some salt. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw out our sacred heart using a pencil. So when I start hearts, I like to start with the bumps on the top. So I create two little bumps, kind of like this, and the initial shape of the bumps kind of reminds me of a bird flying. Once I get my bumps drawn out, I can start to create the point of my heart. So I just extend those curves of the heart down the page, making sure to leave a little bit of space. And that point should kind of be like the shape of a V. And if I'm ever going too fast, you can always pause the video or jump ahead if you're ready for the next part of the drawing. So next we're going to be putting in our little drops of blood. So I'm going to be putting in a curved line near the bottom of my heart, curved kind of like a frown. And I'm going to be putting in my two drops of blood. So it's pointed at the top and it is curved at the bottom. And I'm going to do another one. Pointed at the top, curved at the bottom. And you can make those as big or as small as you want. You can do as many or as few as you'd like. So then what we're going to do is we're going to start to put in the flames for our heart. So I'm going to start over here on the left side. So when I'm doing a flame, I like to do like curved lines. So this one kind of reminds me of a curve like a question mark. So that can be my first curve of flame. And I can do a similar curve on top of it, curved like the top of a question mark, but maybe I don't go down as far this time. I can also do the right side, kind of the similar curve but I'm going to do the opposite direction. So this one looks a little bit more like the letter S. And I want the points of the flames to be nice and pointy so it's narrower at the tip. And then as I go out and around, I can start to thicken up that curve. But maybe I don't go all the way down and around. And for this middle one, I can kind of do a wiggly line kind of in and out, in and out like that, like a squiggle. And then I can have that come down, matching the curves of the flame, but maybe getting wider or more narrow in parts. Kind of like so. Later on, we're going to be adding in the cross and the crown of thorns, but for now, this is going to be good enough. If you want to make any tweaks, you can always use your eraser to touch up any parts of your painting that you would wish. So the next part of our painting, we're going to start to fill in our heart. You can use any kind of medium to fill in your heart, but today I'm going to be demonstrating in watercolors. So I can take one of my paint brushes, I'm going to dip it in my water, and then I'm going to pick the color for my heart. So we're going to start with the heart first. Um, when you paint with watercolors, it's kind of good to paint one section at a time. So um, I have my paint loaded up on my brush. I made it really um, juicy and wet, and I'm going to start to fill in the shape of my heart. So my paper is dry, and I am painting wet paint on dry paper for these beginning steps. That way the paint um, stays more controlled in the sections that I'm working on. If I wanted to add another layer of color, I could, or if I want to add more color into the heart, I can kind of drop that color in on top of the heart while it's still wet, and that can kind of create some neat color blending 
shadows, that kind of thing. So you can get as creative with it as you would like. You can also soak up any paint colors that you don't like using your paper towel. Like if you get too dark or you accidentally spill um, over in your painting, you can use a paper towel to mop that up really quick. So I'm going to be using um, a smaller brush to fill in these drops of blood. So I'm going to dip my brush in my water cup, load up some paint onto my paintbrush, and I'm going to fill those drops of blood in as well, but maybe a little bit darker than my heart. All right, so while that is starting to dry, and you can kind of see that it's already starting to dry in some really neat and interesting ways, I'm going to be filling in the flames of my heart. You can do any color for this. I like to do the lighter colors first, kind of like the yellows, and then I add the darker colors on top. So I'm going to load up my paintbrush with some yellow, and I'm gonna to start to fill in the flames of my heart. So the less paint that you use on your paintbrush, the thinner and more watered down the color is going to look. Whereas if you have lots of paint loaded on your brush at once, kind of like this, it makes the color darker or more strong. And I could always thin out the stronger colors by dipping my brush in some water and that creates a lighter wash of that color onto my painting. And as I'm adding these flames in, I'm trying not to touch the red of my heart um, to try to avoid the colors um, over blending. So while that yellow is still a little bit wet, I wanna add some other colors to my flame. So I can take another color like orange, and if I just kind of dab it close to the tip of the heart, because the yellow paint is wet, it's starting to make that orange paint kind of bleed in the areas where there's already yellow painted on the canvas. So you can add that to any parts of your flames that you want a little bit darker. Kind of like this. I could also add a color like red. So I have the same red that I used earlier add some of that to my flames. It's kind of fun to see the way the paint bleeds and spreads. Kind of like this. You can even add a color like purple. Sometimes that kind of makes neat effects. And one of my other favorite ways to add um, kind of that flame fire look is I like to take a little bit of salt and sprinkle that onto my paint while it's still wet. And you can kind of see that salt, it's starting to suck up the color and it's going to create these really neat crystal effects. So while that flame is starting to dry, um, I can get started on the crown of thorns that's wrapping around the heart. Um, if your heart is still wet, you definitely would want to wait for that to dry before adding in your crown of thorns. That way the paint doesn't bleed in with the wet paint of your heart. You could um, just wait for it to dry naturally or you could even blow dry your painting a little bit to help speed up that process. So um, I'm going to be using black for my crown of thorns and I want that to come across the middle of the heart. So I want to start a little bit outside of the heart and I'm just going to move my paintbrush up and down kind of like waves.
So I want another line that's going to crisscross. So I'm going to start this one a little bit lower. So I'm going to move my hand up and down, kind of crisscrossing over the first line that I drew with my paintbrush. And then you can go back and darken up parts of that line if you'd like. So I want to add little points to create the thorns. So I can take my brush and I can pull it out and away to create these thorns. We naturally push a little bit harder when we start a line and we naturally start to loosen up on the pressure when we end the line. So that's why I like to start on the main part of my crown of thorns and pull my brush out and away. So that way it's a little bit thicker and where it connects to the main part of the crown and it's a little bit more pointed like a thorn would be as I pull my brush away. And you can do as many or as few of those as you wish. And I used black, but you can use any color on your paintings. So the less pressure you use, the thinner your lines are going to be. The more pressure you use, the thicker your lines are going to be. Kind of like that. At this time, I can go in and I'm going to darken up this cut in the heart with just a little bit more red, kind of like this. I can also decide if I want to add um, another layer of paint to um, parts of my heart or parts of these drops of blood or even around the heart to help outline it a little bit more. So you definitely want to wait until your flames are all dry before adding in the cross to your painting. So I actually use the blow dryer to help encourage my painting to dry a little bit faster. And when it's all dry, you can wipe away any um, extra salt that might still be on your painting. So then what we're going to do is you can take a smaller paintbrush and we are going to be adding in the cross at the top of the heart. So I have a smaller paintbrush and right in the middle where my heart starts to dip down, I'm going to take my black paint and I'm going to add one line going straight up and down for the tallest part of the cross. And then I can do one line straight across for the shorter part of the cross. And if I wanted to, I could go back um, into parts of my painting and kind of touch things up, add an extra layer of color if I feel like it needs more color in different areas of my heart, but that's about it. Um, one other thing that I love to do um, to kind of help my flames look more flame-like is I like to add in a splatter technique. So I can take a paintbrush and I have a little bit of a shiny gold paint that I'm going to be using for my splatters. I just get my brush nice and wet. The wetter the paint is, I feel like the better it splatters. And what I do is I hold my brush just a little bit above my painting and I just start to tap the back of my paintbrush and that splatters the paint forward onto my watercolor. Once your painting is dry, you can take off your masking tape. I always try to pull my masking tape away from the painting. That way in case the paper rips, it's going to only rip on the edge and not ruin the rest of my artwork. I love that sparkle from the gold. I love the way that the salt kind of made these really neat crystals, making my flame more interesting. And I even had some happy accidents inside of the heart, the way that the paint started to dry as I worked on it. Thank you so much for painting along with me. I would love to see how your sacred hearts turned out. Feel free to tag me on Instagram. 
so I can see your paintings. If you like this tutorial, you can like this video and follow along with me on YouTube to learn more Catholic art tutorials and other ways to be creative but with a Catholic twist. Remember that you are loved. God loves you and your artwork unconditionally. Thanks for painting along with me.